Station O platform has been opened. In moments, the Long March 5B will lift off. The rocket will be carrying the Tianhe core module to space, the foundation elements of China's planned orbital space station. This launch will kick off a flurry of the missions to establish China's Tiangong space station by the end of 2022. And now scientists and engineers are making last minute preparations for the core module's maiden flight, which is to take off at Wenshan Space launch site in South China's Hainan province. And hello and welcome to our special coverage of China's space mission on CGTN. I'm Li Xiuyuan. And I'm Yang Zhao. And China has ambitious plan for its space programs to be carried out by the end of next year. It's expected to conduct 11 missions. That includes four crew spaceship flights, four cargo spaceship flights, as well as launching three space station modules. Tianhe Core module is the first major mission on the list. The missions are part of China's l larger goal to complete the building of its first space station by around 2022. And Tianhe's journey is, is made possible by its launch vehicle, the Long March 5B Y2 rocket. It's a new member of the Long March 5 family of rocket carriers. The deployment of the rocket carriers are part of the country's ambitions to explore outer space. This moment took nearly 10 years. The Long March 5B project was officially approved in November 2011 to undertake the task of launching modules of China's planned space station. From its preliminary development stage, it moved into trial development stage seven years later. The Long March 5B Y1 passed factory evaluation in January 2020. On May 5th, it successfully lifted off from the Wenchang Space Launch Center in Hainan Province. In February this year, development of the Long March 5B Y2 was completed and delivered to Wenchang. On April 23rd, it was transferred along with the Tianhe to the launch pad, where it awaits another countdown to China's space exploration ambitions. Specially developed for the construction of China's space, the Long March 5B is nearly 54 meters in height, about the size of an 18-story building. Its cowling is 20.5 meters in height, with a diameter of 5.2 meters, the biggest of its kind in the country at present. The Long March 5B runs on clean fuels like liquid hydrogen and oxygen. It has the biggest boost power in the Long March 5 families, making it possible for China to launch bigger spacecraft. The Long March 5B rocket can deliver 22 tons of payload at a time to low Earth orbit. It has the largest carrying capacity among China's existing rockets and is among the leaders in this category of rockets in the world. Compared with a Long March 5 rocket, which is like a long-distance runner launching satellites to further distances in the universe, the Long March 5B rocket is akin to a sprinter with strong, explosive power. Deep space exploration missions, such as large-scale communication satellites and probes to Mars and the Moon, are completed by the Long March 5 rocket. The Long March 5B rocket mainly undertakes launch missions for the space station and its modules to low Earth orbits. The Long March 5B rocket is among China's new generation launch vehicles. It reflects the progress of the country's space engineering over the past decade. Experts say technology behind the 5B lays the groundwork for the development of heavier launch vehicles in the future. Well, joining us in the studio is Professor Yang Yuguang from China Aerospace Science and Industry Cooperation. And we have another guest via video link, Xu Yansong, the Director General in Asia Pacific Space Cooperation Organization. Welcome you both. Now, let me start with you, Professor Yang. Talk to us a little bit about this rocket, right? What is the carrying capacity of this Long March 5B carrier rocket? As you mentioned, the Long March 5B is a new family, mem new member of the Long March 5 uh, family. 
Uh, the original version of Long March 5 uh, has two and a half stage, which is mainly used to launch high altitude orbit uh, payloads, such as uh, geosynchronous orbit uh, satellites, such as the uh, lunar uh, probes or the Martian probes. Uh, so for the low Earth orbit, uh, it's not feasible to have, uh, launch uh, heavy payloads more than 20 tons. So this Long March 5B is a derivative of, of Long March 5, which only have one and a half stage. But the payload fairing is very big to uh, put the uh, the space station in. The payload fairing is long more than uh, 20 meters, uh, and the capability is, uh, as mentioned, 25 times to the low Earth orbit. So a simpler structure, but a higher reliability, isn't it? Well, um, yeah, I got a question from Mr. Xu. So uh, we have to watch the LOMAS-5 and the LOMAS-5B have for, for this test of flight. Can you tell us, the, uh, both of them are it's the LOMAS-5 family, so what is the difference between them? Well, the Long March 5B basically is a simplified version uh, for the low Earth orbit capabilities. As Professor Yang mentioned, Long March 5 uh, was for geosynchronous and deep space missions. Long March 5B basically removed the second stage, uh, which uh, plays a role for a higher altitude. So uh, that also enabled the rocket to have a larger fairing a larger capability to lo low Earth orbit with a single stage uh, launch. So that is this a fundamental difference between the 5 and the 5B. And Professor Yang, this rocket is the most powerful rocket that China has ever had. Why do we need the Long March 5B carrier rocket for this particular mission? You're correct. Uh, long March uh, 5B is the uh, largest long launch vehicle for China to launch uh, lower orbit payloads. Actually speaking, it is the uh, third, la uh, third largest uh, rocket in the world. Uh, the, f the most uh, powerful is uh, Falcon Heavy. The second is Delta IV Heavy. Uh, the Falcon Heavy has a payload capability to Earth orbit of about uh, 63 tons. And the uh, Delta IV Heavy has a capability of 28 tons. Well, our Long March uh, 5B is uh, uh, the top three uh, launch vehicle in the world have a capability of 25 tons. You know that our uh, space station is composed of uh, three modules in the initial stage. The Tianhe core module, the Wentian uh, experimental module, and the Mengtian experimental module. Uh, all these three modules has a mass of more than uh, 22 tons. So we don't have other choices. We can only use the Long March 5B to launch these three uh, modules into st space and combine them together together to construct the station. Well, thank you, Dr. Yan. And for the latest, let's go to our reporter, Ning Hong, at uh, Wenchang Spacecraft launch site. Hello, Ning Hong, and how are the preparation going so far? Hello. Hmm. Well, yes, now we're in a platform very close to the launch pad and the rocket is about roughly three kilometers uh, before uh, in front of the launch pad. You can see now the rocket and the service platform is now open. The rocket, uh, we, we, we have learned that the, the propellants now have been added into the, orbit, uh, into the rocket. You can see that uh, there are vapors showing beside the rocket. That's because it is using the uh, low temperature liquid propellants. And it's now uh, people need to fill the propellants, continue filling it until before they launch. And we're now about a half an hour before the launch. And you can see that this is a very open platform. We could see directly, uh, we could directly see the launch pad. And also, uh, this is the rocket that carrying the core module of China's space station, the Tianhe. And we're soon uh, entering a new era where China will have its own space station. And also, the rocket now uh, they're using is the Long March 5B rocket. Uh, like, like you said, it's a specially made rocket for uh, to sending uh, modules like spacecraft into the orbit, lowest orbit. And also in the meantime, uh, we, we have learned that uh, the weather here today is not very good, but it's a little bit cloudy, a little bit windy, but it seems that, uh, well, people are confident about the, uh, about the launch. So uh, the launch is, is very likely to be continued, uh, and it, it will be launched about uh, half an hour from now on. Well, thank you, Ning Hong. That's our reporter from the Wenchang Spacecraft Launch Center. And now let's get back to our uh, studio interview with. Um, so I got this question for uh, Mr. Xu. So uh, we have to, we have noticed that the Long March 5B carrier rocket has the super large uh, payload fairing. And why is that? Well, basically because of the space station is large. Uh, but traditionally, we have 3.35 diameter uh, launch vehicle. This is basically due to the limitations that we have long side inland in China. 
uh, limited by the railway capabilities and tunnels that will have to limit the ferrying. So the Long March 5B has the longest and largest ferrying so far. Uh, the dimension is over 22 meters along uh, for the ferrying only, and uh, it's uh, more than five meter diameter. So it's capable of uh, engulfing the uh, maximum dimension of the Tianhe uh, segment, and also future missions, as uh, Professor Yang mentioned, Meng Tian and Wen Tian. So those are three largest segments, like like the human body and both arms of the station. So it is due to largely due to the uh, dimension required. Yes, um, in, a, in a later uh, we're going to see that the super long fairing that is long is over uh, 20 meters. Is the, yeah. That's that, the super one. Uh, that is very critical. And you were just watching live pictures coming from that Wenchang uh, spacecraft launch site. But Mr. Yang, let me bring you into this. There's a bit of green technology involved in the fuels, right? Talk to us about the clean fuels that the rocket is going to use. Yes, you know that uh, Long March 5 family is called the new generation of China's launch vehicles. Uh, before that, uh, is, uh, currently in service is Long March uh, 2, 3, and 4 series. Uh, all these launch vehicles use uh, uh, UDMH, or unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine, as a fuel, and use uh, nitro uh, nitrogen uh, tetroxide as the uh, oxidizer. The uh, UDMH is highly toxic, and the uh, NTO, or the nitrogen uh, uh, di uh, uh, dioxide, is highly uh, corrosive. So all these are uh, toxic fuels, toxic uh, propellants uh, during the past. Well, our new generation, including this long, uh, long March 5, use a uh, uh, cryogenic uh, propulsion system. Uh, the four boosters use the kerosene as the fuel and use oxygen as the outsider. While the core stage of Long March 5 uh, or Long March 5B use the uh, liquid hydrogen as the fuel and use liquid oxygen as the uh, uh, oxidizer. So you see uh, kerosene. Liquid oxygen and the liquid hydrogen are all environmental friendly, uh, no toxic and no corrosive uh, components. So you see that uh, this will be uh, more friendly to Earth and more easy to use. But on the other hand, it also brings some difficulties. You see that liquid hydrogen and the liquid oxygen must be being kept in a very low temperature. So it requires, uh, it raises a very high requirement to the launch pad and uh, to the launch procedure. You may see the uh, white smokes or the white fog uh, coming out uh, from the vehicle itself. That is the uh, vaporized That's liquid vapor. oxygen. Mm -hmm. And we were having that shot of the countdown club. We were just 40 minutes away from the launch, and you were seeing uh, the shot of the command center. People are doing these final preparations and uh, Mr. Xu, how does the Long March 5 uh, compare with other heavy lift rockets that are in operation now? We're having this great view of this Long March 5 rocket of the launch pad now. Yes, the Long March 5 has, uh, like uh, uh, Professor Yang mentioned, the, uh, its unique characters. It used the liquid kerosene as the strapped arm boosters. As you can see, uh, the total configuration, there are four strapped arm boosters along with the centerpiece, which is uh, YF-77 uh, liquid uh, uh, hydrogen and oxygen engine. And so this is a character that, uh, you know, you uh, when you launch, you use the kerosene as propellant uh, in the atmosphere. So compared with the other vehicles, we have upgraded the, the centerpiece, which is the core engine, into a liquid, car uh, liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, which has a, a better uh, rash ratio in propulsion once it enters outer space. So the rocket is very efficient and also environmental friendly, as uh, Professor Yang mentioned. The Hainan launching site is built for such a fuel only. So UDMH and nitrogen tetroxide is not part of the plan for Hainan, only kerosene and oxygen. So it's very clean and also very efficient rocket. Yes, this is a new type of fuel that we are using in the Lomars 5B is uh, more environmental friendly. Um, and uh, we, we go ahead. What, what can we expect it from China's next heavy lift to carrier rocket, Dr. Yang? Uh, well, you see that the leaders of China Aerospace has expressed their wish to have a human missions to the moon in the future. Yep. And also, in the just uh, after the, the two sessions of this year, has, uh, has announced that uh, we have the plan to have the uh, human missions in, in the future. So we now is in the stage of key technology uh, preparation. So you see that we already have some tests about the 
10 meter module of the core stage of the future super heavy launch vehicle and also the 500 ton level thrust uh, rocket engines uh, which is in development. So you can sooner or later we can have this heavy launch vehicle to prepare for our astronauts to walk on the moon. Yes, Mr. Mr. Xu, uh, are we going to expect it to see some more heavier and bigger and larger rocket in China in the future? <laughs> I'm sure we're going to see that because uh, we have already invested in the uh, evaluation and assessment of the launch uh, vehicle. Uh, we have to find the appropriate purpose for the development of such a vehicle. For example, our human missions to the moon and beyond. So the, uh, the, heavy, uh, the heavy lifting, uh, we call it Long March 9 sometimes, uh, is uh, twice as height as of what we're going to see, uh, we're seeing now. This rocket uh, we're seeing, Long March 5B, is is only 53.7 meters in, uh, in height. But the new generation, uh, Long March 9, let's call it for now, it would be more than uh, 97 meters, it's almost 100 meters tall and 10 meters uh, in diameter. So it's twice the size of this uh, uh, Long March 5 series. So we, uh, we, we do look forward to see that in a decade time or even less, uh, because critical technologies are being tested and evaluated. And uh, once we have that, I'm sure the human missions and more ambitious programs will be implemented. All right, we were seeing the monitors showing the humidity, the temperatures at the launch site, and we were just less than 35 minutes to go to the launch. But Professor Yang, it looks like we're having a bit of cast sky, overcast sky there. Uh, is it an ideal climate or weather for the launch? Uh, that doesn't uh, have much influence to our launch. You see that uh, for a uh, for launch procedure, uh, uh, there are many conditions we must meet. For instance, there should not be thunder and lightning uh, during the trajectory of the rocket. And also, uh, before, uh, before the launch, the wind should also be uh, well monitored because the wind have very great influence during the flight. And also, you see that uh, because until now, the human being cannot go into orbit with only one single stage, so we need to drop our stages uh, in the sea or in the land. Mm -hmm. For this uh, Wenchang uh, spacecraft launch site, our uh, boosters, our payload fairings of this long launch 5B will drop into the sea. So before the launch, we should see, that, uh, we, we should confirm that during the dropping areas, there is no uh, any vehicles, uh, either ships or planes, uh, coming through this uh, this area. So we must uh, keep this safe, and also uh, we must uh, ensure that. Other system, for instance, such as, such as the uh, telecontrol, te uh, telecommunication, and tracking system, is okay. We have ground stations and also have space tracking sit. All must be in good condition. All right, Dr. Yang and Dr. Xu, stay with us. Now, China is set to launch the core module of its first space station today, as we've been talking about. And CGTN's reporter Yo Yang takes a look at a model to show us what it looks like and how it was developed. As the main control cabin of China's first space station, the core module of Tianhe is about 16.6 .6 meters long with a diameter of over 4 meters. It's divided into three parts, the connector, the life support and the control section, as well as the section for resources. The connector looks like a hexagon. It has two berth ports for two lab modules called Wentian and Mengtian and three docking ports for the Shenzhou crew spacecraft the cargo and other vehicles. It also has an exit on top where astronauts can conduct the spacewalks. This is the living area of the crew. It's about 50 cubic meters. It's also called the thinner area. It's got three sleeping areas and one sanitary part. This is the thicker part, which is the working area, where astronauts control the daily operation of Space Center while conducting some scientific experiments. If we take a look from the outside, this is the resources part of Tianhe. It's responsible for fueling the space station. Once operational, the space station can host the three astronauts for six months and up to six astronauts by replacement. Tianhe, along with its Long March 5B Y2 carrier rocket, has currently been transported to China's Wenchang spacecraft launch site in Hainan province. And it's all set to kick off its journey into space. Youyang, CGTN, Beijing.
Dan, for those of you who are joining us just now, you're now watching our special coverage of China launching the core module of its space station. That was a shot of the command center showing you the humidity, the weather of today, and this is a great view of the rocket we're launching today. The rocket was especially developed to launch the space station modules for China, and today it's about to launch the 22-ton Tianhe space station core module into the space, and we call it the Chubby Five, or Pang Wu in Chinese, <laughs> because of its size. Yeah. It's a heavy lift like launch nickname. vehicle. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like that nickname. Uh, in, in, in our field, it is called the Aztec Ritual. Uh, which means the, the length and the diameter, this ratio. Uh, Long March 5 has a diameter of 5 meters, so the aspect ratio is not very high. Mm -hmm. So this makes, uh, means that it is more rigid uh, than other vehicles, and also uh, for, uh, for, for, for this design, it brings some convenience uh, of the flight. Yeah. And looking from here, it might not sit that big to you, but just give you a sense of how big this is. The Long March 5B is about 53.7 meter long with a, like Professor Yang just mentioned, 5 meter diameter core stage and also uh, four strap-on boosters, as you can see now at the bottom of your screen. Those are the side boosters. Um, the diameter of that side booster alone is about 3.35 uh, meters, right? That is as exactly. big as a normal rocket, such as the Long yes. March 2F or Long March 7 rocket, which is pretty impressive. Yes, uh, as uh, as uh, as Mr. Xu has mentioned, because of the limitation of the railway tunnels, so our inland uh, launch site can only use the diameter of the 3.35. Uh, so that is the uh, uh, diameter of the, even the core stages of other rocket vehicles. But for this uh, launch vehicle, the boosters has a, a so big diameter. Mm. And we should also emphasize that the, the four boosters provide more than 90% of the thrust, mm. uh, of the total thrust during the liftoff, uh, because they use a, a powerful rocket engine called YF-100, mm. uh, which has a thrust of about 120 tons. So each rocket boosters use two of these engines. Uh, so totally, the four boosters can provide a thrust about 960 tons. You yes. can see that uh, this is the biggest uh, launch complex in China. Mm -hmm. And uh, just now we can see from the camera that there are some white, uh, white folks uh, coming out from the top what of the that? boosters. That is the oxygen. That okay. is the uh, vaporized uh, uh, liquid oxygen. Because uh, you know that it must be kept in a very low temperature. And uh, uh, by yo, yo. vaporizing... Okay. All right, that is the call out you're hearing now. It is 30 minutes prior to launch. It is T minus 30 minutes. And at this point, what, what happens here, Professor Yang? Well, we have a countdown in different stages. For the three, uh, for the 30 minutes uh, countdown, we've already uh, completed uh, many uh, checking of the critical systems. Uh, for instance, uh, such as the uh, telemetry and the tracking systems, the uh, space tracking ships, and also to confirm that other systems are okay. Moreover, we should also test some of the subsystems on board the vehicle itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, each must be kept in a, a good condition and monitored by the data down uh, and also, uh, you see, you can see also there are some small arms on the vehicle because we have multiple plugs connected to the vehicle, hmm. and one by one they will be disconnected, and finally the major plug, uh, the main plug, will be disconnected, and the vehicle will be completely, completely uh, depending on the power supply of itself. At that moment, we can perform the launch. And it is also the time where you know the last batch of team members pulling away from the launch pad, is it? Uh, so at, at, at this moment, there is no ground staff near the vehicle mm -hmm. because it will be very dangerous. So uh, there are procedures, uh, or the safety procedures ensure the safety of our staff. You see that uh, the fueling has been completed several hours before. Uh, at this moment, the, the ground staff must leave the launch pad because if there is uh, any uncertain things happen, uh, the, uh, the explosion will hurt uh, the threat the uh, life of our ground staff. And the umbilicals we're looking at, they are still attached to this rocket. Why, why is it? Because we still need uh, connections, some cable con connection to the vehicle, such as the power supply, uh, such as uh, uh, such a monitor of the signal and the control commands to the vehicle. So uh, until the last minute, maybe uh, one minute or uh, just uh, s several seconds before the launch, uh, finally we, uh, we disconnect the, the main plug. What are those cable and uh, those it seems a lot of the pumping tubes there, so connecting yes. this, the main body of the rocket and the service structure. Uh, they have been the pumping the, I think it's the fuel, right? It's yeah. just, they need to keep 
fueling that rocket until the last minute. Yes, uh, you see that uh, we need the storage batteries to provide uh, electricity uh, during the flight and uh, before the launch, just after the disconnection. Uh, so the, we must save the, the energy of the storage uh, uh, storage batteries because the cap uh, capacity is limited. Mm -hmm. So just uh, uh, at, at this moment, still there are cables connected to the vehicle to uh, provide power supply. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, that is the cost that we have to pay for uh, making the more environmental friendly engines and the more environmental friendly fuels, right? Yeah, that's true. Yes. And the timing of the launch, Professor Yang, uh, talk to us a little bit about it. How did they choose this launch window? I would imagine a lot of factors went into this decision. Yeah. Well, you see that's because this is the uh, first uh, launch of our uh, Tiangong uh, uh, space station. Theoretically speaking, it only uh, need to in, uh, launch into a uh, orbit with the right uh, attitude and the right inclination. Mm -hmm. So uh, theoretically speaking, there is no much limitation to this. But also, uh, there are some limitations about the, the sunlight. You see that. Uh, when the uh, Tianhe module come into the orbit, the sunlight must in the right direction to yeah. ensure the power supply of the vehicle. So the launch window is limited by this uh, limited uh, by this consideration. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the uh, the angle between the direction of the sunlight and the outer plane must be less than thirty degrees. Mm -hmm. And also uh, this uh, because the, the launch this this is the condition of the sunlight. And also uh, the the time of the launch uh, we must ensure that when the uh, rocket the end stage of the rocket is separated from the uh, space station. Uh, when the uh, solar panels is deployed, there are also sunlight to ensure the power supply. Yeah, so sometimes you, we saw this uh, kind of launching window in the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is the launch of the first module. For the second module and other ships, the things will be changed because they match the Why launch into the first uh, orbital plane. The accuracy of the launch window is only one second, which is called a zero launch window. Zero launch window. So once yes. it's missed it, they have to be... Another day. Oh, they okay. have to totally reschedule then. Well, it's maybe better than the Mars exploration, because uh, once it's missed, it's going to need to wait another 26 months. Right? Uh, maybe the next, uh, for this, maybe the next uh, 24 hours. Uh, yeah. Uh, every yeah. day we have a launch video for, this, uh, for, the, for the next vehicle to go into the same orbital plane of the station. And Mr. Xu, let me bring you into our discussion. We are looking at the view of the command center at the Wenchang Spacecraft Launch yeah. Center. And talk to us about this launch site. I mean, there are four major launch sites in China, right? This is a great coastal view. I mean, this, yeah. sat this satellite launch center or launch center is located in coastal regions, but we already have another one called Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. That was way yeah. up north in the, in the, the Gobi, Gobi Desert, desert yeah. right? That one is for launching astronauts into space. Well, this one you're looking at is responsible for launching cargo spacecraft into space. Why is that, Mr. Xu? Well, I think uh, this is uh, like previous, uh, we have just mentioned about the fueling system. Uh, uh, we have developed the new generation uh, uh, launch vehicle, uh, which is based on liquid kerosene and oxygen. Uh, that fueling system is part of the infrastructure of the launch site. So the Wenchang Satellite launch site is only for kerosene, uh, oxygen, and hydrogen fuels. Uh, there is no other fuel uh, system that you, is available for the rocket. Uh, in, in one child. So, so new generations starting from Long March 5 uh, onward, such as 6, Long March 7, and 8, uh, will all use the same fueling system. So mm -hmm. all of those rockets you will see in the future will be launched from this particular launching site, including the Long March 7, which is due to be launched very soon uh, following this mission of Long March 5. Uh, as you mentioned about Ju Chuan, I think that we, we also need to mention about the system engineering of such a uh, complex program as human missions. Uh, the system in, uh, comprises not only the launch vehicle, but also the TTNC support system, the ground facility, the manufacturing, the operation, and the human missions, including life support system. All of this will be put together and to, come, to form a complex and very complicated system. So as you can see, at the launching site, they're preparing for the launch of the Tianhe, and also busy at uh, Jiuquan, they're busy with the astronauts preparation. So once the Tianhe is in orbit, in the right uh, inclinations and orbit, as Professor Yang mentioned, uh, once, in, uh, once in a day opportunity, so once we capture that window and we put, uh, insert this uh, uh, Tianhe into the right orbit, 
and we will start preparing for the following missions. And of, of course, the uh, designing of the orbit as well as the launching of Unity is also based largely on, on the orbit and communication capabilities. It has to be flying over the Chinese territory that we are able to see and witness to control the rendezvous docking in the future for the human missions. Uh, well, well, uh, Mr. Xu, uh, the Long March 5B is going to uh, launch from the Wenchang, and how long uh, can we expect it for this flight? Like, uh, how long did, did it take did it to uh, take to uh, enter this orbit? Roughly, we, we, we consider that uh, launching opportunity, uh, launching uh, timing uh, by seconds. Uh, I think it's around 1,270 some seconds uh, before we have we see the insertion. Uh, That's about 10 minutes. Ten yes. Uh, so once it's in there, uh, they will see the deployment of the solar array of the Tianhe and then start communicating with the Tianhe. So right now, the ground, the ground crews, as, as, as well as those connecting uh, ports, or the umbilicals you can see uh, from the ground to the uh, launch vehicle, is basically communicating with the launch vehicle as well as communicating with the uh, Tianhe, uh, uh, Tianhe uh, station. So once uh, it's launched, we'll focus on the control of the launch vehicle and once deployed, we'll, we'll communicate with the Tianhe directly with using uh, TTNC network, that including uh, the ocean-going ships as well as the ground crew. So it's a, uh, it's, a, it's a process that will take uh, very close connections between each other. And let's talk a little bit about the Tianhe core module, right? Because she is the star today. Yes. Um, you were looking at the bottom of the rocket, but at the tip of that rocket, the Tianhe core module was actually encased in that huge casing called rocket fairing, right? And Dr. Yang, talk to us about it. China hopes to have its first space station operation by 2022. But how is this core module instrumental to the space station's construction? Well, of course, the, uh, the core module will be the most uh, critical step of the construction of our station. In fact, this uh, Tianhe one, uh, the accurate name is uh, the test core module. So uh, the, it will be, it is, and at, at this moment, it is not the formal core module of the station. So after launch, we will perform many critical or key technology demonstration as test testing. If all these are okay, we can formally uh, change the name to the uh, core module. If something wrong, we must have some improvement. We will launch a second core module. That will be the formal one. So uh, before this, we must perform uh, the uh, demonstration of many key technologies. For instance, the long-term residence of, of, uh, of astronauts in space, uh, the regenerative life support system, and also other, uh, other technologies to operate so heavy uh, long, uh, spacecraft like this. And also, we need to test the transpositioning technologies for the, uh, for the experimental modules. You see, we choose a different technology comparing with other countries, although we also uh, choose a modular design like the Mir station and the space, uh, International Space Station, but we, uh, when the uh, Tian, uh, Meng Tian and the Wen Tian modules is stocked, we transfer its uh, position by a special mechanism. So ma we must uh, test this technology. Well, thank you, uh, gentlemen. Uh, stay with us. And China is set to have its own space station orbiting the Earth by the end of the 2022. So how many missions is this going to take to get everything up and running and keep it that way? CGTN's Wule explains. It took me only a few minutes to finish this model of the Chinese space station. But if you're going to build an actual one in space, it's not that simple. China's Tiangong space station project consists of three stages, key technical verification, construction, and operation. The successful maiden launch of China's Long March 5B rocket in May of 2020 was a key milestone validating this rocket as a viable vehicle to lift the station's core module called Tianhe into its designated orbit. Tiangong will be a T-shaped structure with the Tianhe core module and Meng Tian and Wen Tian experimental modules. Besides the three launches to put the modules in orbit, 
China has planned four manned missions and four cargo missions. Eleven intensive launches in total by the end of 2022. All of China's manned space missions will rely on this Long March 2F rocket. The Shenzhou spacecraft sits on the top of the rocket. Once the core module and later the entire Tiangong station are in place, this specific craft will dock with the core module while in orbit. Chinese astronauts will not only conduct a number of experiments, but also carry out extravehicular activities to help complete the construction of the space station. Living and working in space for long periods of time requires more supplies. This is where the Long March 7 carrier rocket comes in. It will be used to carry the Tianzhou cargo ship, which will contain food, water, and other necessary supplies to the space station. All of these missions are integral parts, furthering China's endeavors for space exploration. Wu Lei, CGTN. Welcome back. You're now watching our special coverage of China's latest special launch. We're just 16 minutes away from that launch, and staying with us are our guests, Mr. Xu Yanzhong and Dr. Yang Yuguang. So,、uh, Dr. Yang, let's start with you this time. To construct such a space station is planned as the last step of China's manned space program. That was envisioned firstly in 1992, right? 29 years in the making. I mean, how have previous steps contributed to this moment? Well, you see, there are three fundamental technologies needed for construction of a space station. The first one is the transportation,、uh, the crude transportation from the Earth to the、uh, to the outer space and back. This is the first technology. The se second is, as Wu Lei has mentioned, the, the EVA, EVA or extravehicular activity technologies,、mm -hmm. which we accomplished by the Shenzhou Seven mission in 2008. And the third technology is the、uh, rendezvous and the docking technologies, which we completed testing by the Tiangong One、uh, target vehicle and the Shenzhou Eight, Nine, and Ten spaceships.、Uh, mm -hmm. Also with the、uh, Tiangong Two and、uh, Shenzhou Eleven, Tiangong One mission, we. Master the technology of of midterm residence in space by、uh, Mr. Jin Haipeng and Mr. Chen Dong. They stayed there for、uh, a month, and also with the Tianzhou One cargo ship, we master the technology of refueling, which is also critical for the future space station. So with these preparation works, we master most of the major technologies of constructing a space station, but not all the technologies. So we still need the.、Uh, Demonstration of technologies、okay. during this Tianhe One、right. and the Tianzhou Two, Shenzhou Twelve mission. All right, fifteen minutes to go till the launch. That's right.、Um, All right, you hit the. Yeah, the controller is saying that is the fifteen minutes、uh, countdown. And Mr. Yang,、uh, well, yeah, this is the whole plan is、uh, has been carried out step by step. It's going into your duck,、uh, Mr. Xu. I want to I want to ask you that、uh, what did we learn from this, those、uh, previous missions like Tian. Tiangong One, Tiangong Two, and Shenzhou spacecraft. Well, the Tiangong One, we learned something very special.、Uh, let's talk about Tiangong Two first. Yeah.、Uh, Round docking, as well as the connection、uh, between the cargo ship,、uh, as uh, as as、uh, they, there are two ways:、uh, automatic、uh, or automated、uh, docking and rendezvous,、mm -hmm. and、uh, man-controlled rendezvous and docking. So、uh, we have demonstrated all that, and also we demonstrated the. Fueling、uh, of the station、mm -hmm. uh, in microwave microgravity environment. This is、uh, crucial because now once you're in microgravity environment, the fuels、uh, are floating instead of just dropping on the on the bottom of the, of the container. So the fueling can be very challenging、uh, and also requires special technologies. And Dr.、So、we, Yang, you were you were watching the live feed with us. What was disconnected just then? Well, that is the cable which、uh, monitoring some of the subsystems, some critical systems of the vehicle. You see that we have a control system called the GNC or、uh, guidance navigation and control system.、Mm -hmm. We must、uh, keep that the,、uh, for instance, such as the、uh, gyroscopes, the accelerometers, and the onboard computers are okay. So we have the cables to、uh, have data links, download the uh, critical uh, parameters of the, of these instruments. And、uh, and before the launch,、uh, you see that there are several. Cables.、Uh, so just now we just、uh, disconnected one of them. There are also other uh, cables. Uh, just uh, before the、uh, launch, we will disconnect the the last one, which provide provide also power supply to the vehicle. 
And now, uh, because some of this system has already been okay, we also hear from the front, from the ground control center, there are the Tongguling, which have mm -hmm. a ground uh, tracking station. Tracking is also station. okay. All right, about 10 minutes into the final preparations. Yeah, with those, uh, the cables that's been plugged in this domain body of the rocket, we're still, uh, we can still manipulate that rocket through those cables, We right? can still send the commands to the vehicle. Yeah. And also mm -hmm. we can get the data, the monitoring of the old systems of the vehicle from these yeah. cables. Right. But uh, so yeah. also uh, the most important, the power supply to the vehicle. As yeah. I mentioned, yeah. because the storage battery only have a limited capacity. But yeah. after the cutoff of those cables, uh, the rocket is on its own. Exactly. So just uh, several seconds before the, the launch, the onboard computer will control all the critical system of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Xu, we were looking at the launch team in our screen now. Talk to us, what is it like for them? I mean, during these last few minutes, few seconds leading up to time zero, I mean, it is one of those heart-pounding moments, I would imagine, right? It's got to be extremely nerve-wracking, but at the same time, you got to keep calm and focus on what you do. What do you think is going through their mind? Well, uh, as we started from 30 minutes countdown to all this moment, uh, there's a sequence that I've already designed many times, and so they have also practice all of this many times. So I think their uh, their lack of, uh, they're, they're good in confidence because the data, as Professor Yang mentioned, are, are constantly feeding back from the rocket. Mm -hmm. uh, even though the, the cables are disconnected, we still have remote uh, uh, TTNC uh, signals. Mm -hmm. And we have also uh, all the sensors that is working. So uh, the ground crew or in the command room, they're uh, controlling, monitoring, and, and keep constant eye on those signals, on those uh, 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 sensors, uh, on the data, some parameters. Uh, so uh, if there, everything goes normal, because they have the chart to compare, and if uh, everything goes normal, they will go to count down to, to the last minute or the last second. If not, they will, they will have the authority to call, call off the, the launch. Uh, we have this uh, happen before, uh, even a second before the launch, we call off the launch uh, itself because of the anomaly occurred mm -hmm. in the launch vehicle. So even disconnected, we still have all the connections made to the long trip. And Mr. Xu, um, in a previous one, we mentioned that uh, the carry out by the NASA, we can we can saw them from the live streaming that there is the go no go procedure. It's a poll mm, to decide it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, whether they're going to to give a call uh, a go. to go. Right? Mm -hmm. um, are, are we going to have the same procedure here in China? Exactly. Yes, we do. We do. And uh, <laughs> right later, uh, Mr. Yang. <laughs> Many similarities, and also we have our own system of calling off the, the launch. All right, 10 minutes out. 10 minutes out. This is the final status check. We are going to here. Oh, that's the call out from the commander. We can, uh, we can hear from the ground control center that the chief commander has announced this uh, P minus 10 minutes countdown. Mm -hmm. And what happened prior to this, around this time, is that the air conditioning for the fairing has been cut off, right? Talk to us about you it. You see that uh, uh, the, the temperature and other environmental param parameters must be kept in the co correct range during the launch. So there is an air conditioner inside the payload fairing. Mm -hmm. It also needs the power supply. Just before the launch, because only 10 minutes, we can ensure that even if it's shut down, the temperature is still in the, the right range. So mm -hmm. uh, at this moment, we can shut down the air con conditioner and go on. And as Yen Su has mentioned, mm -hmm. we not only have signals from the cables, we also have wireless connections. Uh, you mm -hmm. see that the payload fairing is made of metals. So we must prepare some special uh, non-metal uh, material uh, mm -hmm. to uh, have a window to mm -hmm. allow the uh, radio signals to come in through. That's right. That's a comfort. That's a most a comfortable zone within yeah. that fairing. And yep. the Tianhe core module includes the living quarters for astronauts and control center, right? It needs to provide life support for astronauts, so air, water. I mean, how is that being messed, Dr. Yang? Well, you see that's uh, the from from the outside, we can see that the uh, that the core module is comp composed of a node, a small cylindrical segment, and a large cylindrical segment. The bedroom. Mm -hmm or the sleeping chamber of the three astronauts is in the small cylindrical segment. Okay. Also, there is a toilet there. <laughs> <laughs> they got to have that. Got to have that. Yeah, Mr. Chu, can we, can we go ahead with our go, no go question? Um, I'm sure. still very curious about that. Uh, we have been interrupted by the countdown. 
Well, yes, uh, I think the go and no go is, is basically on the, the launch vehicle aesthetics. Uh, we, we see the uh, uh, pressure of the uh, engines and all the engines are okay and all the uh, ground uh, control and systems are, are fine because once you you have the liftoff, you have the rocket all, only controlled by the TTNC system and all the data has to be transmitted back. So uh, we have to uh, make sure that all the uh, sensors in different part of the uh, rocket, in particular the, the engine system, the fueling system, and the uh, all of that has to be in the right uh, right temperature and right pressure. Uh, this happened before because we've seen uh, anomalies of the one of the sensors that could be affected uh, not only by the rocket itself but also by uh, surrounding environment. As you you, you uh, as you know, the Hainan is a highly humid and, and high temperature areas. So that also happened in in, in before uh, for the liquid kerosene or oxygen engine. So all, all of the factors are, are compiled together. Uh, some, of the, some of them are critical enough to call off the launch. So, but fingers crossed, uh, certainly we hope this one is a, is a, a smooth one. All right, that's a, that was a great split screen, and you're now watching at site boosters of the rocket. We are just moments away from that liftoff. Uh, also talk to us, Dr. Young, the energy about the core module. I mean, everything run in the module needs energy, right? And I suppose solar energy is the main source? Yes, uh, we, uh, you see that's the final step of the launch, the, uh, in, in which case we can announce the successful launch success of this mission will be the deployment or the unfolding of the solar panels. That means we, the, the, the core module can have continuous uh, power supplies from the sun. You see that our core module have a uh, one-dimensional uh, one uh, one uh, SADA, or the solar array driving assembly, uh, which can rotate and uh, uh, let the, the, the surface of the solar panel meet the sun. All right. And they do have Wi-Fi up there, I heard. Is it yeah, true exactly. that they're yeah. going to have 5G yes. coverage? Yeah, they can yes. play the video games uh, and talk to your family. Uh, <laughs> may, maybe they can play video game, but maybe the uh, the astronaut should bring a, a laptop to, to the station. So you see that this happened during the uh, operation of the International Space Station. Uh, but you see that but the most uh, favorite um, uh, entertainment of the astronaut is not video game. It's just uh, watching the beautiful Earth Aww. and uh, taking yeah. photos of them of their family, of their cities, and other countries. That is That's great. Right. And the core module, eventually the space station will be flying in low Earth orbit, right, Dr. Young? Yeah, and yeah. it's going to be affected somehow by gravity. So once in a while, it needs to readjust its position, and that needs refuel. How is refuel, <laughs> refueling going to be uh, achieved? Uh, well, you see, that we adopt a uh, uh, docking mechanism called the APAS, <laughs> or the androgynous <laughs> Oh, five minutes come down. Five, five minutes, minutes. Come down. We are entering the final stages, really. Oh, there you see Chinese Premier Li Keqiang. That is the live picture coming out from the Beijing Aerospace City. Chinese Premier Li Keqiang is among the audience who are watching this launch very closely. That is Mr. Wang Huning, member of the Standing Committee of the CPC Political Bureau. They are there to watch this, which really speaks volume about how important Beijing sees this mission, isn't it, Dr. Yang? Uh, uh, in every important mission, our uh, Beijing Flight Control Center also taking a very important role to okay. give commands. So you see, there are, there are control centers in Beijing and also in the front, actually speaking, in Wenchang, which controls the uh, uh, rocket itself. But also we have cent uh, control centers in Xi'an to control the TTNC system. Okay. And the Chinese leaders are showing up in this uh, control center. Hmm. It's another uh, symbol to show how important today yeah, is exactly. launch is. And very interesting, that Beijing Aerospace City you were seeing uh, is also the main training base for China's astronauts, right? A lot of Meet the Press events were actually held there. Yeah. It's just in the northern part of Beijing City, right? Hmm. And, and the it's... primary function of that uh, Aerospace City is also known. All right, this is uh, the live picture coming out from uh, Wenchang. That is... Mr. Zhang Youxia, who is in charging of this mission. The chief commander of China's manned space program. Oh, no. Right. Yeah. Right. So this Thank launch you. is going to kick off the series of launching and uh, coming, I think it's in two years, right? Yes. There's about 11, uh, 10 more launches, except for today. 11 launches. Yeah, 11, 11 more total. launches. Yeah, 11 Including launches this in one. total. 
And this launch is going to be followed by a manned mission. No, very soon. the second one will be the launch of, uh, as Wuli has mentioned, the Tianzhou Two cargo mm-hmm. ship, which will be launched also in this in uh, The cruise mm-hmm. mission will be the third one. All right, that is T minus three minutes. We're here in the call out. Three minutes out, less than three minutes prior to liftoff. They are going through some final status check, I would assume. And quite a nerve-wracking moment right, I mean, for the uh, whole launch team and for all of us who are yeah. watching. Yeah, just approaching us. Uh, getting excited yeah, to a see A gazillion that. things right. that be going on, and everything needs to be done right in an orderly fashion. Any tiny mistakes right. that get, could be catastrophic. <laughs> I want to get back to the very fundamental question for, for both of you, Mr. Yan and Mr. Xu. Um, what is the significance of the construction of a China space station? Why, why do we need a space station? Uh, because this is uh, one important but important step for us to be a uh, ad- advanced country mm-hmm. in space field. We've already been a big country. We hope be, we can be. Uh, this will be a very uh, important milestone for us. And also, it is not only the national laboratory in space, but also a very important international cooperation platform. Well, I think it's also very important for future human missions, either to the moon or beyond. So if you want to be an interplanetary species, this is the very first step. Did we see the umbilicals pulling away? Is this about the time that the umbilicals Maybe several pulling seconds away? later. Several so seconds later. Seconds later, the, the final plug or the major, uh, the, the main plug will be disconnected. And that will indicate that the launch pad team has yeah, given yeah. a go. And just the before this, uh, this dis- disconnection, the, the power supply will change from the ground to the vehicle itself. Using the storage batteries. Two minutes, I think. Two, it's two minutes, minutes out. Yeah, I heard that. It's two mm-hmm. minutes. Yeah, we're watching this. Uh, there Long also five B. I think that's for uh, three thirty-five meter uh, diameter boosters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tell us more about that booster. The booster, uh, the as you mentioned, the booster uh, has a diameter of three point three five meters using liquid. Uh, Liquid oxygen, oxygen, oxygen and the kerosene as the propellant, okay. and each have a thrust of. Oh, I thought it was two. A solid. I, I used to have thought it. No, was no, solid. it's not solid. It's, it's not liquid, solid. liquid, liquid so rockets. Liquid and All right. So how's that was using the uh, liquid oxygen, right? The, uh, the cross stage use uh, liquid, liquid Be oxygen. Mine. Okay, yeah. we're seeing the countdown clock there. Yeah. Everybody's watching that. All right, T minus 60 seconds, one minute prior to liftoff. Truly an incredible moment to witness. Well, I'm getting nervous right now. Yeah. There are also <laughs> cameras on the rotation arms to monitor the disconnection of the plugs. Mm. And right. ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, you're watching the live feed coming out from the Wenchang Spacecraft Launch Center. China is about to launch the core module of its Tiangong Space Station 40 seconds out. The Tianhe core module is on board that rocket you are looking at, the most powerful heavy lift rocket, the Long March 5B rocket, 30 seconds out. 29 years after China's manned space program was envisioned, the first module of the space station is finally being launched to space. Less than 20 seconds out. What an extraordinary moment. All right. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, two one. one. Engine ignition. All right, lift off. And lift off. What an incredible view. That is the sound of history. A historic space flight carrying the Tianhe module, the core module of China's space station, that itself. It's history in the making, a major milestone of China's space program with the ambition to explore deep space. Not even gravity contains humanity now. And Dr. Yang, we are looking at the view of the side boosters, aren't exactly. we? Exactly. Yeah. This is a camera mounted on the core, uh, core, core stage. You can see it's uh, uh, looking downward. We can see that the, the mm-hmm. two of the four boosters so and we also are the flames. looking down how, how at the did, tail of the yeah, rocket, right? How did they install that camera on that? Uh, this is a very small camera mounted on the surface of the core module. So it, it does not influence uh, the, the, the shape, the, the, the total shape of the, the vehicle. And also 
don't don't have the right. aerodynamic influence. And keep in mind, the Long March 5B has four strap-on boosters like this. You are looking at two out of the four, and yes. they run on liquid fuels. And in the That's next right. few minutes, these boosters will detach and fall away after yeah. propellant is burned up. All right, 69 seconds into the flight, everything looks to be going good. Yeah. The core stage will continue to burn after these boosters detach. And in the next few minutes, we're going to see some major steps, are we, uh, Mr. Xu? Look, yes. yes, I think the separation of the booster will be the first thing you will see, even visible mm -hmm. with your naked eye. Mm -hmm. So the strap-on booster provided uh, more than 90% of the mm -hmm. propulsion All right. uh, as of this moment. So once it's in the outer atmosphere, uh, about 100 kilometers off the ground, you'll see the the, uh, the fairing also will be separated. And where is seeing this 3D animation, animation right. on the right of your screen, right? And you can see the rocket has pitched over a bit. Yeah. Originally, the rocket is shooting up vertically, but eventually it will fly in orbit, so it's gonna take a turn in direction. The horizon right is right rotating and uh, turning uh, slightly, and now it's heading to the uh, orbit. South, uh, southeast wood. Okay. And you can see that bright orange flame so out of started, the nozzle. Yeah, it started with uh, the vertical flying, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. it will turn. So the, the the pitch over is the first operation after liftoff is already being successfully completed. And okay. as Yan Song has mentioned, the next step will be the separation of the four boosters uh, mm -hmm. just three minutes after the liftoff. All right, that's the major event coming up, booster separation. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Why is this critical to this flight, Dr. Yang? Because separation is always very uh, dangerous. Uh, there are influence of the aerodynamic forces, and also the separation itself has some shock and vibration to the mm -hmm. uh, to the instruments. And speaking of that, when are we going to hit maximum Q, max Q, and when uh, is the actually, rocket supersonic? Uh, yes, actually speaking, this at this moment is already All supersonic. Right, that is the engine shut off, booster separation. Great. You can hear the booster cheering and applause from command center. Looks like we've got a good separation. A good, a good start. separation. It's a good yeah. start. Mm. All right. So, so you now can see it's just the core stage is flying. So you can see also this is, is the uh, camera. Of Earth? Oh, this is inside the payload fairing. Okay, okay. so next up is payload fairing module. separation. Yeah. Okay. okay. That is the core module that we're watching at. We can see some. Uh, there are some lights inside the payload fairing, and also mm -hmm. you see uh, on the right of the window, uh, the screen is the 3D animation. Mm -hmm. This 3D animation is based on the the real date uh, downloaded from the vehicle, the mm -hmm. position, the attitude, mm -hmm. and the condition mm -hmm. of the engines. So that was actually oh, based on great. Light. So oh, great the fairing, fairing is, jettison. It, Another round of applause. It's ejected. A good separation again. And you are watching at the dotted yellow lines, right? What are they? they these are data links from ground tracking Yes, that shows stations, that uh, in which station is uh, connected to the vehicle, yeah, uh, either uh, upload, uplink, or downlink. So you see, we have stations in our Xisha Islands, and also we have uh, the uh, space tracking ships mm -hmm. in the Pacific Ocean. And now the Tianhe core module is actually exposed in space, right? That, is that what we're looking at at the left side of the screen? Yes. Uh, the, uh, After look, the fairing jettison. So, the, uh, so this is the camera mounted also on the on the core stage and looking uh, forward, not like the last camera we mentioned. So you can mm. see part of the space station. Uh, Mr. Xu, it's very interesting to see that uh, because the Long March 5B is the single stage rocket. It's not like uh, the Long March 5. And uh, in the previous mission, we can we can saw this the rocket is just to throw it away the stage one and stage two and uh, and and just to have a very smaller parts to get to enter that space and enter that orbit. But in this case, the Long March Five B, there there's going to be a huge core stage flying in the outer space. Yes, it's going to be a single burn. I think uh, yeah. once you have the separation separation of the strap on booster by the pyrotechnics. Uh, we also have the separation of the fairing. So now it's mm -hmm. flying right into the direction and the altitude it requires. So once the engine shut down, it will have a small adjustment to the, uh, to the appropriate yeah, inclinations and orbit, mm -hmm. and it will be a separation of the, the, the core stage with the Tianhe. So once that is happened, it means the success of this mission, of this uh, launching phase. And, and, and I think it's going to be more complicated than the multiple stage rocket because 
Um, you got a bigger, you got a bigger stage. You got a, you got a main engine that to create is 140 tons of thrust, and you stop them suddenly. It's like a, I think it's like the high speed train have an emergency stop. Can they just uh, get into this orbit properly? Uh, you, you just mentioned the a very important fa uh, fact. Before you see that Long March 5B is the only rocket in the world that only have a one and a half state to come into orbit. So there are many great challenges. For instance, as you mentioned, we use the two uh, YF-77 rocket engines in this core stage, which have a thrust of 50 tons. That means that the total thrust of the core stage is 100 tons. It's very big for uh, when it is shut down to come into the orbit, because you see that we have very strict requirement in the accuracy of the orbit. Well, for this, uh, for this accuracy, uh, the smaller the thrust is, it will be easier. But you see that the thrust is rather big. And at this moment of the shutdown, the uh, cross stage, the tank is almost empty. So it is very difficult for us to keep the accuracy. That is a great challenge uh, when we de developing this uh, Long March 5B launch vehicle. That yeah. is really an extraordinary view. I think that's the Earth on the left side. Yes. seeing right, that br bright, bright light you're watching now. And the rocket is flying over the Pacific Ocean, right? It's actually flying eastward. East, south east. Southeast, oh. so it's because the because the, uh, uh, the the inclination of the orbit will be 20, uh, 41 to forty two degrees, while the latitude of the Wenchang Satellite Launch Center is mm -hmm. uh, nineteen degrees. So we need mm -hmm. the direction we call the launch azimuth. Launch Adamac is uh, going to the south, uh, south east woods. Mm -hmm. 450 Mr. seconds into yeah, the flight. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Xu, I think we're expected to see the, the next stage, probably to cut off the main engine. Am I right? Yes, yes a shutdown of the main engine and the separation. So, but, mm -hmm. but once we reach that altitude and the velocity, we will have that uh, happen. So this uh, liquid kerosene and uh, liquid hydrogen oxygen engine will continue to burn, and it will have a, a very high efficiency once in outer space, mm -hmm. unlike in atmosphere. So uh, the advantage of ha uh, hydrogen and oxygen engine uh, will will be fully displayed in outer space. Did we heard off. the engine cut off? The engine has been cut off. Spacecraft separation. Wait. Separation is ongoing and. A perfect view. This is the. Video from the end stage. Right. This is a video from the core stage of Long March 5B. Yes. And you can see from the screen on the left side is the Earth. So bright because wow. it is under the shine, sunshine. Wow. Wow, a good spacecraft separation. Tianfo core module now is flying by itself in way to orbit. Go, way to go. It's already in the initial orbit. Theoretically speaking, the, the perigee should be about 170 uh, kilometers, and the apogee should be about nearly 400 kilometers. Wow, you can see quite a relief are, for the launch team. That. Yeah, it's a very excited day. They have worked years and years on it. I've seen some interview um, from the Launchpad team. They are saying that it looks like, it feels like this Tianhe Core module is like their child. So this launch just feels like really sending off your child. They are excited for it, but they are, you know, they feel kind of sad. It's a mixed feeling, sad yeah, to let yeah. go. They, they but spent also, decades on yeah. working for that. How so you can see the how 3D. Long have they, how long have they started this project? Uh, you mean the whole manned space program? Yeah, this. Uh, we just started the manned space program since uh, 1992. Mm -hmm. uh, it is called uh, 921, uh, 921 uh, project. project. Right. So uh, because of this data, you can mm -hmm. see from the 3D animation. Now mm -hmm. the vehicle, the uh, station is on itself. Mm -hmm. The Long March 5B has already completed its task. And mm. the station must uh, first uh, stable itself because the separation may uh, brought some disturbance or perturbation to the uh, attitude of the vehicle. So it must uh, use its rocket engine to make it stable. And then will be the uh, deployment of the uh, large sized antenna. Because you see that there are uh, high speed trans uh, uh, transmissions of signals to the data relay satellites. We must de deploy the antenna first. And then will be the unfolding of the solar panels. Mm. And that's going to happen wow, in what Earth. in about fifty minutes time. Yes. That is or that is or that's, that's a great Earth. view. Yeah, that's Earth. Wow. So what are we uh, t still talk to us about what are we expected to see? You talked about uh, antenna deployment. 
that why is that taking so long to deploy this? Uh, you see that before this, as I mentioned, we must uh, keep the station stable. stable. Usually, the uh, rocket itself, the separation is very slight, uh, but they still have some disturbance, mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, several degrees per second. Uh, so uh, after separation, the, uh, propel the propulsion system of the station will start and use the small engines uh, to reduce the angular velocity to a very low level. Uh, so at this moment, we can call that we have set up the uh, attitude of the vehicle. And then we'll check some uh, critical uh, system, subsystem, for instance, such as the TTNC, such as the power supply, and other critical system. And then will be the deployment, as I mentioned, the antenna. To uh, This is the preparation for the future to set up a high-speed data link between the uh, station and the uh, data relay satellite. Mr. Xu, I think the, we're watching this uh, Tianhe core module is uh, entering the orbit, which is at the altitude of 400 kilometers above our head. Tell us more about this orbit. Well, I, I, I just saw notice a little bit of the uh, tumbling of the uh, station uh, at the separation. So uh, the small adjustment is very much uh, important to, re, uh, to readjust the uh, orientation of the uh, Tianhe station. Uh, before the deployment of the solar array, uh, the separation seems to be, you know, a little, little bit uh, disturbed, or or some uh, uh, some uh, effects on the uh, attitude of the Tianhe. So I, I'm I'm sure that the ground crew are busy controlling the Tianhe station uh, to the right altitude and the right uh, uh, directions uh, using the small propulsions that uh, is for orbit adjustment. Mm -hmm. And then we will have the right uh, angle to deploy the solar array. And then once that is done, we will establish a long-term communication with the ground. Mm -hmm. And the TTNC uh, crew will have a, a good communication with the, uh, with the module. Uh, so that will be uh, unlocking of the stations and preparation for docking with the cargo ship. Uh, the cargo ship is very important for fueling the station because we don't have too much fuel on board the Tianhe uh, segment, mm -hmm. so we need the, the the cargo ship to go go ahead to supply the fuel and uh, docking uh, with the fueling uh, before we have the crew on board. So we're going to have some adjustment burns, and you are looking at the replay of the moment of liftoff. Mm -hmm. A magnificent view, truly. And normally, you know, launch providers and launch agencies, they would have a simulation like what we just saw, the 3D animation that takes in all of the live data that does a visual representation of it. That was not a pre-made program, not a pre-made video, but it shows you what is going on in real time. And that will even show you when they're as an anomaly, right, Dr. Young? Uh, as I mentioned, this 3D animation is based on the data get from the real flight, uh, mm -hmm. the, the position the velocity, the yeah. attitude, and the status of the which engines are working. So we can get the real uh, status from the screen. That's right. The, um, and the tanker is going to pick up this uh, orbit at, at about 400 kilometers above our head. And uh, that's the same. I think it's the, the, the International Space Station also using that, uh, the, the, using that orbit. Why did they just to pick up the why they just fly that low, Dr. Yang? Ah, you see, that's uh, most space stations and manned space activities in low orbit are in several hundred kilometers, usually not uh, no higher than 600 uh, kilometers high. This is because you see that uh, outside the Earth, there is a radio belt called the Van Allen uh, radiation belt. Uh, the, the bottom of this radiation belt is about uh, 600 or 700 kilometers. So if our spacecraft is higher than, than this uh, altitude, the astronauts will be influenced by the radiation. So that's not good for the healthy of the astronauts. Mm -hmm. but on the other hand, if the orbit is too low, for instance, uh, less than 300 kilometers, the aerodynamic drag will, also, will greatly influence the orbit. We will need more propellants to keep the orbit of the spacecraft. So it should not be so high and not should be so low. So in the years before, our Shenzhou spaceship and our Tiangong laboratory usually in the operation orbit about 350 kilometers high. And for this station and the International Space Station, they can work in the attitude about 400 kilometers. As we speak, the Tianhe core module is flying in orbit now, 16 minutes into the flight. Everything continues to look good. Uh, we 
you went through several key separation status, right? And where do, you know, the boosters go? Where do the fairing go? And where do the first stage land, uh, Mr. Xu? Well, they, uh, the, there are drop zones in the Pacific. Uh, we, uh, we normally design the vehicle in such a fashion that the, the dropping of the, uh, what we call expandable launch vehicle parts uh, are not affecting the normal life of people. So mm -hmm. those drop zones will be in deep oceans in the Pacific. So the first four strap-on boosters will be dropped uh, near the Saipan areas, uh, and then the, the fairings will be dropped uh, subsequently in the southern Pacific in, in areas that they, uh, is not habited by people. Mm -hmm. So though, this is also the purpose of the Hainan long site, so that we affect the people's life. So as you said, this is an expandable rocket, but uh, I understand that China has experimented actually on reusable rocket, right? Tell us about that. When is that going to be applied to? We're doing a lot of experiments on the reusable launch vehicles. Uh, we have also seen the international effort in, in, in particular SpaceX can bring the uh, rockets back and also even re recycle the fairing. Uh, we, we're looking at the possibilities because uh, the, there are special technologies involved in the reusable of uh, rocket engines. Some of the engines are, are once you, you have, the materials you use are, are for single time only, uh, but the uh, technologies as uh, SpaceX, the using the Mullins engine, which has been demonstrated on the space shuttle, and the technology has been transferred from NASA to SpaceX. So there are many factors affecting the reuse of engines, uh, the reliabilities as well as the uh, cost-effective uh, factors, uh, whether we use uh, the, the reusable or uh, we use uh, single expendable, because uh, the reusable uh, uh, technology also requires you to uh, put on more fuels and to bring the rockets back. All right, Dr. Xu, Dr. Yang, thank you for your analysis, but don't go away. We're going to come back to you in just a bit. And you're now watching our special coverage of China's space exploration. A Long March 5B rocket has just launched Tianhe Core Module into space from Wenchang Spacecraft Launch Site in Hainan Province. And let's now go to our reporter, Ning Hong, who is live at the site. Good to see you there, Ning Hong. So what's it like uh, for you? Describe what is around you. It's actually Tian here, Ning Hong. <laughs> Well, the rocket had just lift off a few minutes ago and successfully sending the core module of China's space station into orbit. And this is a very unique event because, while well, this is China's first space station, although the core module weighs about 22 tons. And the rocket, the Long March 5B, is specially designed and built to send uh, as Send spacecrafts as large as this into low Earth orbit, 22 tons. I mean, and the rocket has successfully completed its mission, sending the module into the orbit just a minute ago. And uh, I heard people crowd, people are cheering as the uh, core stage separated with the core module, and because this marks that this, the rocket has successfully complete, completed its mission. And now, what we're waiting now is that the core module has a new. Uh, solar panel. It's called a flexible uh, solar panel. It will extend from the core module, but it will take more time, much longer than what we have before, because the core module uh, has a has a really uh, high demand on energy, so uh, this new panel will certainly br bring more energy to this core module, and as well as uh, astronauts that will be working inside it. So now we are still waiting for the confirmation about this. And once the solar panel extended, uh, well, uh, people, uh, this mission will complete. So we're still wait waiting for this information. All right, quite an exhilarating moment. We're truly witnessing history to be made here. Thanks so much, Nihon, joining us live at the launch site. And you're watching our special coverage of Tana Core Module's mission to... Uh, and we're going to take a short break. That's and right. don't go away. Stay with us.